We're coming to you from Studio A on the campus of Scottsdale Community College. I'm Mike Caratanudo, and this is Inside Maricopa Sports. <music> on this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports, we'll check in with the Region 1 Division 2 champions in baseball and softball. Head over to MCC to talk to an Olympic weightlifting coach, and Jeff Lowry checks in with heat-related injuries. And a coach's corner with Glendale's women's volleyball coach, Lisa Stuck. Plus a golf tip from our friends at Talking Stick. Stay tuned. Packers. Viking. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Town. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. The baseball and softball regional tournaments have wrapped up. And two teams are headed to the NJCAA championships as back-to-back -back region champs. Championship on three! One, two, three! Championship! After winning their second straight Region 1 Division 2 championship, the Artichoke baseball team is playing in the NJCAA World Series in Enid, Oklahoma. Artichoke pitcher Colton Thompson believes the team has great momentum heading into the World Series. We're pretty solid all around. Everyone believes in each other. We're all out here for each other. Not a single, not a single person. So if we keep doing that, we're gonna we're gonna be just fine. Sophomore outfielder Devin Turner feels the team's tough conference schedule has prepared them for the World Series. When we you know, when we go to the World Series, we're up to the top of the uh, level of play there. So we look to have a little bit of an advantage there, playing against a good competition all year. Head coach Alex Journey feels his team is peaking at the right time. I always say that the team that learns the most in the end is the one that winds up winning. And considering where we were at spring break, I mean, they learned the lessons that they needed to learn, and, you know, we couldn't be any more proud of them. After going undefeated in the regional tournament, the Lady Bears softball team headed back to the softball championships in Clinton, Mississippi to defend their title. The Lady Bears were the number two seed in the tournament and they collided with the top-seeded team, LSU Eunice, in the semifinals, but suffered their first loss of the tournament, 6-1. to one. But PC rebounded with a 1-0 win over Cowley County to set up a rematch with LSU Eunice in the championship game. The Bears would have to win two games to bring home back-to-back -back titles, but LSU Eunice won the game 8-0 to to take home the championship. LSU Eunice finished the season with a 61-5 record, and the Lady Bears were 48-17. Congratulations to Coach Mueller and the Lady Bears on a successful season. To see how the Artichokes did in the World Series, log on to njcaa.org. The Olympic Games feature the best athletes from across the country, including athletes from the Maricopa Colleges. I caught up with MCC weightlifting instructor Joe Michella, who coached the USA's number one female weightlifter in last year's Olympics. The last time we talked to Joe Michella, he was teaching strength and conditioning at Estrella Mountain Community College. Joe's focus is powerlifting for his class. Machilla went to London for the Olympic Games, where he coached Sarah Robles, the USA's top-ranked women's powerlifter, where she finished seventh. That capped off a very successful and busy year. The Pan American Championships, we had the Worlds that were right back to back. They were only about three weeks um, next to each other. Then we had the Olympic test event in London. Um, then in March, we turned around, we had, to, had our trials. She began her athletic career throwing the shot put and discus. But Sarah is quick to point out that it was Joe who saw her raw talent and introduced her to powerlifting. When I was at ASU, I went to Joe to, to learn how to do the Olympic lifts and, you know, make my training better so I could be a better thrower. But then, you know, he saw something in me and said that, you know, you can medal if, you know, if you participate at our junior national championships. So I believed in him and I went and he was right. And I ended up going to the junior world championships and I just fell in love with it and wanted to continue to pursue it. Getting to compete in the Olympics was an honor for Sarah, but it was even better because her mom was also there to cheer her on. My mom hasn't been able to attend a lot of the competitions that I've been to because of things that have happened throughout her lives, but for her to be able to come to the Olympic Games is really nice. My mom, my mom deserved to have a trip and she deserved to be able to see me compete and I, I love having the moral support of her there. Both Joe and Sarah enjoyed the Olympic experience. Most of the athletes, like I said, that we were encountered, not only the U.S. team members, but the foreign athletes couldn't have been any, any nicer. You know, we just had, you know, an unbelievable experience that I, I won't replace it. You know, it, was, it, it just will always be, you know, deep in my heart. Joe and I were as close to the cauldron as possible, so we, we could feel the heat from, from the cauldron, and it was so beautiful. And I loved how they had one one little lantern part from each country in the world and they all assembled together in one which represents 
what we're doing at the Olympic Games. We're all coming together as, as one. While the London Games are over, Sarah and Joe are setting their sights on the 2016 Summer Games in Rio. Four more years of training and high hopes of a medal. Mike Caratanudo for Inside Maricopa Sports. We'll look for more success from Joe and Sarah as the 2016 Olympics approach. The IMS Golf Tip, brought to you by Talking Stick Golf Club. Troon Golf in Scottsdale. Hi, I'm Jack Lobiondo, teaching professional here at Talking Stick Golf Club. Today I'm going to discuss how to correct your slice from the for your left-handed golfers. So for your left-handed golfer, this is the ball that curves right to left. Okay, so our first checkpoint to correct the slice for us lefties here is going to be our grip. The grip is going to be dictated by our right hand, how it hangs naturally. So our right hand grip is going to be the main factor here. So you notice is if I, if I let go of my club and let my hands hang naturally, my right hand curves in a little bit to the left, that's a neutral position for myself. So I'm going to actually just let the club hang in my fingers and my thumb is slightly left of center here and this is a neutral grip for me. If I grip it unnatural, which would be weak, this is going to open the club face because my hand wants to come back to a neutral position. So right hand hangs, thumb is left of center, left hand comes on. As I make a downswing, the club face will be square then. Now if we're still hitting a little bit a ball that slices right to left, our second checkpoint is going to make sure our right wrist is flat at the top. So they take the club back, the wrist should remain flat at the top. This would be a cup wrist and this is going to cause the club face to be open. So if I were to make a downswing with a cup wrist, the club face would be pointing to the left. This is going to cause that ball to slice moving right to left. So I'm going to take it back again at the top and then keep my right wrist flat. This is going to make the club face remain square at impact and hit the ball straight. So two things we're going to do is going to make sure our grip is on there correctly and then make sure our right, hand, right wrist is flat at the top. So as we make our downswing from this position, the club face is going to be square and the ball is going to go straight. The IMS Golf Tip has been brought to you by Talking Stick Golf Club, Troon Golf in Scottsdale. With the high temperatures in Arizona during the summer months, training is very difficult. Jeff Lowry reports on the dangers of heat-related injuries. Hydrate, hydrate, and hydrate. Nearly 400 people die each year in America due to heat-related illnesses. Arizona alone accounts for nearly 50 of them. In most cases, it's the victim's lack of knowledge of the symptoms and the effects of heat-related illnesses that contribute to their death. It gets to the point if you start getting dehydrated or overtaxed that you stop sweating and you lose the ability to cool. And then the body starts doing things, shutting down small systems to keep the main ones going, the heart, the brain, the vital organ. It can quickly progress to a serious illness, to heat stroke, in pretty quick if it's not, if it's not managed. Athletes make up a very small percentage of heat-related deaths. In fact, farm workers and adults age 65 and over who are exposed to prolonged high temperatures make up the majority. When you have a heat related problem, especially uh, here in Arizona, the main problem that we find with the low humidity is athletes and people in general don't know they're sweating because it evaporates so quickly. We sometimes find our athletes are dehydrated before practice even starts. And then once you start practicing and you're dehydrated, it's really hard to catch back up. But the responsibility still lies with the individuals themselves. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water, like a gallon a day. Like me personally, if I completely stop drinking soda, that really helps. The first thing that we do is we work very closely with our training staff. Um, you know, they do a pretty good job of keeping us up to date every year with, with different things to notice as far as the heat and heat-related illnesses go. Our big thing is our trainers have um, different coolers at each individual position while we're on the field practicing. Um, those players, when they want water, they know they can go out and get water whenever they need it. They start to feel lightheaded, dizzy, sick. Um, they're immediately removed from practice, taken to a cool-down area. Knowing the symptoms is vital. Incoherence, nausea, vomiting, muscle cramps, weak pulse rate, fatigue, and visual problems are signs to a potential dangerous situation. Trainers like Schroeder and neighbors know that most of the heat-related deaths that occur are preventable. Scottsdale Athletics takes this subject matter very seriously. So for all you weekend warriors and Sandlot stars, know your limitations, and above all, stay properly hydrated. Great job, Jeff. 
Up next on Inside Maricopa Sports, we'll head over to GCC and talk to the women's volleyball coach, Lisa Stuck, in Coach's Corner. Welcome to this edition of Coach's Corner. We're here at Glendale Community College with volleyball head coach Lisa Stuck. And Coach Stuck, obviously you guys right now ranked very highly in the nation. You guys are having another great season here. How do you keep this, uh, this magic going here at Glendale? Uh, we're just really fortunate. I think this year we've got a really good mix of freshmen and sophomores on the team. And the chemistry has been outstanding this year with the kids. They've spent a lot of time working on it with each other and we've spent a lot of time as a coaching staff working on it and I think that combined with the athleticism we have this year is a good mix. Yeah three out of the last four years you guys have been ranked in the NJCAA top 20 in the final polls and now obviously I said up to number two but when, when you look at it I mean building consistency at the junior college level how have you been able to do it? I think in my first few years of coaching it, it was just about looking for the best athlete and, and what I've learned over the years now is and I tell this to my recruits occasionally is it's not necessarily the best player but it's the right player you gotta get that right player that's gonna fit into your philosophy is gonna buy into what you're doing realistically it's not gonna happen all the way back to Kara but you can use this person because you're dragging the block and then half this court's gonna be opened up for her to hit into and has those qualities that you know would be a good fit for the other types of kids you have on your team. And so that's kind of my focus when I recruit. I'm looking for other things other than just athletic ability. You've been here, we're talking 16 years here at Glendale, and most coaches, when you get into coaching at the junior college level, it's almost like a stepping stone. A lot of coaches look at it like, if I can win here three, four, five years, I could move up to that next level. What made it so appealing for you to stay here at Glendale? I had some experience at the Division I level, and I was a lot younger back then, and it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours spent in gyms, it's a lot of traveling, it's very time consuming. And I just think for me, at this point in my coaching career, I value my time a little more, and this particular level provides me with a good balance between my career, my family, my free time, and I can still be a competitive program, still help these kids get their education and move on to the next level if that's what they want to do, but yet have time to spend with family, friends, and do some of the things I enjoy doing. And then when you talk about your players moving on to that next level, obviously, like I said, you having played Division One volleyball, does it almost make it easier for you to get your message through. Not so much easier to coach, but to get your message through because once, they, once they, they're here, they understand, okay, she has been there, and they're more attentive in what you're trying to do as a program. I think it gives you some credibility. You know, it gives you credibility. The kids are more willing to buy into the program. They understand that you know what it's gonna take to be successful at that next level, and I'm committed to preparing them for that. And knowing that, they're very coachable, very willing to learn. They want to work hard. Well, you've obviously done a great job here at Glendale, and I know as you look forward, but where do you see this program going in the future? I'd like to maintain the winning tradition and working hard to place my kids at the next level, following their academic progress, making sure they're getting their degree when they leave here so they have something to show for their time at Glendale. And just continue to put out a competitive program every single year. That's my goal. I'd, I'd love at some point before I finish coaching to get that elusive national championship, but we all know how difficult that is. So that's something we strive for every single year, and my wish is that I, at some point I can grab that thing. Well, we know you've been working hard towards it. Obviously, a lot of success here at Glendale. Coach Stuck, thanks so much for taking the time with us here on Coach's Corner. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. For dates and times of our show, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Check out our Facebook page for news and updates, and visit our YouTube channel for all of MCTV's original programming. For our entire Inside Maricopa Sports team, I'm Mike Caratanudo. We'll see you next time.